Welcome aboard. Glad you're there. I'm Roger Hedgecock. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for joining us, all of you, here in Washington, D.C. We are here for three days. Uh, hold their feet to the fire, and uh, we're going to do just that here in this Congress. More reports from our lobby teams coming up. This uh, Project Gunwalker we've just been talking about has uh, gotten a lot of, of attention here recently and a, a number of awards I was just noticing. In uh, Soldier of Fortune magazine, did a big article about this and got an award uh, for it. Um, a Freedom Award, and I'm uh, pleased to be joined now by John Veleko. Veleko. Veleko? Yeah. Veleko. Uh, Gun Owners of America. He is the Director of Federal Affairs, and Gun Owners of America, these are the guys that are the sort of the unvarnished group, gun rights group. Uh, they don't uh, polish it too much. They just let you have it right, right between the eyes, and, and I love them. John, thanks for being here. Welcome to the yeah, show. It's great to be here, Roger. So we were just talking about uh, Project Gunwalker and this business that's been revealed. Uh, by CBS News, of all places, uh, that uh, the, these guns are pouring, uh, with the BATF approval, pouring across the border in the thousands, apparently, uh, to, the, uh, to the drug cartels, and the worst part of it, of course, being that uh, two of our federal agents have been killed, apparently, with guns from that operation. This is a funded operation of the federal government, seemingly at odds at, in exactly the opposite of what they ought to be doing at BATF. Well, what's your reaction from, your gun, from the Gun Owners of America standpoint? What's your reaction? Well, President Obama and this administration have a serious gun problem uh, brewing. And remember that President Obama, when he was candidate Obama, he, he won in places like Virginia, North Carolina, and Indiana by promising people that he wasn't going to go after their guns. And he said that in, in, in a very Clinton-esque style. He would walk into a gathering like this, look you in the eye, and promise you that he wasn't going to be against your Second Amendment rights. As soon as he won, uh, after he uh, uh, made Hillary Clinton... Secretary of State. He no nominated Eric Holder to be the Attorney General, who was the point man on gun control during the Clinton administration. So he's the one that we can thank for things like the uh, so-called assault weapons ban and the Brady Bill and so on. And so Obama has him heading the Justice Department. We have Harold Coe as the legal advisor to the State Department, the legal advisor to Hillary Clinton, who supports, oh, just a worldwide uh, uh, gun control agenda. Mm -hmm. We have people like Cass Sunstein, who wants to ban hunting and give animals rights in court because of the pain and suffering that animals uh, uh, feel due to hunters. By the way, parenthetically, Samantha Power's husband, she being the architect of the Libya business as the Security Council deputy in the White House. And I'm sure I'm missing some other nominees. But another thing that the president did pretty much out of the gate was, and, and his administration, was to talk about the gun problem in Mexico and how originally there was this 90% of the guns found at the crime scenes of these Mexican drug cartels were coming from these small gun dealers uh, along the border in the U.S. Um, and that turned out to be a completely fallacious number. But um, the, the administration has a problem because it's not going to backtrack and say, oh, no, the guns weren't a problem. <laughs> and so ha they have this convenient program that started in 2005. It's called Project Gun Runner. Project Gun Runner was intended to, quote, stem the flow of guns going from the U.S. to Mexico. Part of that program was uh, another program called Fast and Furious. And what Fast and Furious does is it allows alleged, suspected straw purchasers, the people who are going to transfer the gun to someone else after they buy it, allowed these straw purchasers to buy guns from gun dealers and then let those guns go uh, uh, through the system. And, and supposedly, they were going to trace these guns, track them upstream, and, and nab higher-level criminals. Now, the gun dealers who were selling the guns did not want these sales to go through. They would call the BATF and say, look, I have a guy here who wants to buy 10 AR-15s. He has cash in a paper bag. I don't want to do this sale. And the ATF said, do the sale. Now, ironically, in December of last year, two of the dealers who were cooperating the most with the BATF, it was leaked to the Washington Post that they were responsible for the largest numbers of guns going to Mexico. And so they got completely abandoned by the government. In other words, this program set them up, not the cartel. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and along with all the other dealers along the border. Now, the, a lot of BATF agents were initially supportive of this program, but as the guns were moving, they were being uh, noticed going across the border, 
and ATF agents themselves, and these are the, the people who eventually turned up in the CBS News reports, they were saying to their higher-ups, we have to stop the guns at the border. At least they, they're still moving. Uh, ATF said, no, stand down, let the guns go across the border. Problem is, guns go across the border into Mexico, we lose track of them. And that's what happens. Thousands of guns are showing up in, in crime scenes in Mexico. The BATF head guy in Mexico, the one responsible for interfacing with the Mexican government, didn't even know about the program, didn't approve it. And he started asking questions when an unusually large number of guns were turning up coming out of Phoenix, which incidentally is where Fast and Furious was based out of. So that's why these uh, uh, ATF agent uh, uh, whistleblowers were going to CBS News saying, look, we are causing a problem that is going to come back and, and haunt us. And in fact, as you mentioned, Roger, uh, two of these uh, or several guns were involved in the murder of two federal workers and 150 or more uh, Mexican deaths. Yeah, so these, these guns are turning up in crime scenes all under the watchful eye of the BATF. Absolutely.